is Professor Otaku here once again, and I'm here to pander to you. Pander, 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 pander. Let's talk about girls. I know it's a bit far off field for me to make a video about pretty girls when I'm usually the one saying, don't treat women like objects. But sometimes you just gotta make a vid like this to boost your ratings and get sad men in fedoras calling you a beta or whatever pathetic losers like them say. Let's see if you can figure out my type by the end of this video, hmm? So the usual rules apply. This is my list. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Any problems that you may have with my list that you make a comment about will probably get you blacklisted as a complete doofus because of it. You will also note that my list does not feature whatever lowly fat bait that the internet is obsessed with this week. That's because I'm not a pedophile. So before I get more people clicking off of this video, let's get started. Number 10. Matoko Kusanagi from Ghost in the Shell. Yep, the classic. She's pretty much the archetype I'm into. Dark hair, driven eyes, and, well... The Major Bountiful Bust and Hips! Bust and Hips! Look, I'm a man of simple pleasures, and one of those pleasures is booty. She's also a major butt kicker in Mecha Pilot and a cyborg to boot. Of course, that also kind of precludes anything going into her. <laughs> Not that that much matters to me, but it is worth thinking about all the same. Of course, the fact that she's kind of a psycho is a bit of a downer, but what's a boy to do? She's gorgeous, and she's more women than most of you nerds can handle. And she's got a pretty serious body count behind her, but, uh, well... Next! Number 9. Shizuru Fujimura from Godanar. What is it with me and robot pilots, anyway? Shizuru sashays her great big butt into number 9 because of all the girls in Godanar, she's the one that I remember the best. Yes, in a world full of massive boobs, the one with the gigantic tush is the one that catches my eye. I think that probably speaks more about me than anything else, but eh, what are you gonna do? It's worth noting that Shizuru doesn't actually have a titanic back porch. She's just the only one of the characters who can comfortably shop in the ladies section. And doesn't have metal rods inserted into her spinal column because goddamn, look at them zeppelins! Anyway, Shizuru is a go-getter, easily the equal of any of the pilots she fights alongside, and she refuses to take on a new partner even after her robot gets leveled. She prefers to take care of business in a clearly weaker robot because she doesn't care. She can get the job done anyway. She's confident, level-headed, and can wreck face with the best of them. And she's got a lot better fashion sense than most of the other girls in this show. That goes a long way, let me tell you. Who the hell do you think I am? Number 8. Lena Inverse from Slayers. Lena Inverse is a lot of things, but most importantly, she's a real firecracker of a gal. Sure, she's a walking weapon of mass destruction, a gluttonous little beast, and they probably made a whole new level in hell just for her, but that doesn't stop me from thinking that she's a pretty hot little... Fire! Yikes. She does have her good side, and she does the right thing when the chips are down, but holy Moses, does she like to throw booms around. <laughs> Approach with caution, but she's still number eight in my heart. You're obviously a man who knows quality. Number 7. Eureka Misumaru from Martian Successor Nadesco. Now, I know some people find her insufferable, and I think a lot of people might find her devotion a little worrisome, but she's a crackerjack captain, and I'd follow her into a fictional firefight in a heartbeat. See, one of the big things you'll find throughout this list is the ability to handle their own shit, and Eureka, for all of her comedic ditziness, can clearly manage combat and come out on top. Another reason that she's on the list is she's actively concerned with making sure people get out alive, and in spite of being in command of one of the most powerful battleships in space, she doesn't actually want to use it to kill people. As a staunch pacifist, I can appreciate this. Yurika may not be the soldier that the UN Space Forces wanted her to be, but she's got heart, and she's got mine. Number 6. Ron Kotobuki from Super Gals. If there's one thing you can say about Ron Kotobuki, it's that she's got a hot temper but she's also got the skills to back it up for someone who lives in urban Japan. Between saving her friends from all sorts of dangers, mostly themselves, and steamrolling any scrub that gets in her way, Ron has a devotion to justice and love that would make Sailor Moon reevaluate her life. It's kind of interesting to see that Kogal, or Gyaru, style has come back into fashion, so maybe Ron and her gang will get more play in the near future. Of course, one of the better things about Ron is that she's pretty non-sexualized, even though gals are known for being promiscuous. Granted, the way the characters look would make it a little hard to do so, perhaps, but Ron being choosy with her partners is a nice counter to the going idea, and paints the culture and the characters in a better light. Thanks for standing up for all gals, Ron. 
Number five, Reiko Haga from Comic Party. Clearly the best selection from all the girls in Comic Party, Reiko Haga is the kind of cosplayer who does it for the love of the game. Especially in the cutthroat climate we've got right now, that sort of purity is refreshing and it doesn't hurt that Reiko has the kind of look that makes her look absolutely perfect in or out of costume. But really what grabs me about her is by far her confidence. She knows she doesn't cosplay characters that are currently popular, nor does she do the ones that will immediately get her attention. She cosplays the characters she gives a damn about and isn't scared of playing outside of her gender as well. She does precisely what she wants, when she wants, and that's the end of it. She's got a core of steel running through her, and God help you if you get in her way, and I can appreciate that rather readily. Number four, Yu Kashima from Monthly Girls Nozaki-kun. Okay, it's true, I like him tall. Which in Kashima's case is actually five foot seven. I feel as if I've been lied to. But that aside, Kashima is a capable actress, athlete, and she's the prince of the school she attends. Yeah, I said prince. It's a thing. She's confident, competent, and everything seems effortless to her, which also kind of involves getting girls to fall all over her. Sure, Kashima is a little doofy and gets things screwed up and twisted around pretty easily, but she's not stupid. She's just not quite thinking things through. She's a kick-ass lady altogether, but what really makes me think she's one of the best is that she's the kind of well-meaning screwball that would keep things interesting. It's a little infuriating at times. Plus, she looks good in a uniform and kind of reminds me of character number two on this list. Who knew, right? I have a type. Number three. Carmen 99 from Guncross Sword. Carmen 99, born Carol Mendoza, is Guncross Sword's femme fatale. And whew, what a woman. Yeah, she's sly and twisty, and more often than not, she ends up getting everybody else into way bigger scrambles than she expected. But she also takes jobs that show that she gives a damn about the average person in a world where mecha and madmen are making life miserable. Still, she's tough as nails, and in spite of never piloting a robot, she was easily one of the standout characters of Guncross Sword. She's certainly got the chops to get my attention, even if everyone slept on her. And also, she's one of the big reasons one episode had to be censored in the original release. Whoops! Number 2. Lieutenant Lucrezia Noin from Gundam Wing. That's something about a lady in a uniform. Specifically a green tailcoat and a purple undercut that looks good in pilot goggles. Hmm. Now I know there are some people who peg her as just Lala Soon, <coughs> arc, but Lieutenant Noin is more like Emma Sheen, all told. But that's not important because I'm talking about how much of a fox she is. Come on, like there's not going to be more than one robot pilot on this list. But honestly, what got me is, once again, that very interesting and maybe a little hypocritical idea that she wants to get all of her troopers out of this whole thing alive. Sadly, she is also burdened by her position as a baddie for the beginning of the show, but she's in on the whole save the world bit by the end. Having a strong sense of justice goes a long way to endearing me towards a character. And, uh, well, you know, she ain't half bad looking either. Number one, Tokiko Sumura from Buso Rankin. She's beauty, she's grace, she'll... Sometimes you don't know why you're attracted to a character. I mean, she shares a lot of traits with the other gals on this list, but she's fairly different. Tokiko is kind of scary before you get to know her, but underneath that stony exterior is a heart that just wants to love again. She's a determinator par excellence, but she's also trying to restore something resembling a normal life to herself in the most direct way possible. Tokiko is not a woman that has a lot of secrets. She's very cards on the table, and it's hard not to admire that. I think she's probably one of the better written characters in Busa Rankin altogether, and something about her just makes my heart flutter. To those of you who remember watching my really old videos that I did on this subject, like seven years ago, this really won't shock you. She is, and will always be, number one to me. For now. Until I find somebody better. But they have to work really hard at it. Maybe it's just my aesthetic, maybe I'm just a weirdo, but there's my top 10. You're welcome to disagree, but keep in mind that I have a Twitter account, and I regularly post screenshots of doofy comments. Going back to more regular work next episode, everybody, but let me know what kind of top 10 lists you like seeing, and I'll see if I can swing some of them. Until next time, this is Professor Otaku, the greatest American anti-tuber, signing off. Yeah, that's, that's sticking around. <laughs> <laughs>